Welcome back to the lab. Now today I want to talk about how we have to perform mechanical work on an object in order to change that object's potential energy state. Now the thought experiment we're going to be conducting is relatively simple. It involves using Louie, my lab rat, and I want to look at the work that needs to be done to change the potential energy state from the starting position to a final position one meter higher. Now this is Louie. He's going to give me a hand with this thought experiment. Now a key aspect of this particular work energy thought experiment is that we lift Louis at a constant rate. This means he's moving with a zero acceleration. This also means that during the period of interest, any forces acting on Louis will be equal and opposite. So any upward force will be equal and opposite to the downward force. What this means is that we can assume the upward force applied by my hand has the same magnitude as Louis's weight. Now, if Louis was in a zero-g and zero-drag environment, he would continue to move with a constant velocity and never fall back down once we gave him initial lifting force. This comes from Newton's first law of motion. A body will stay in uniform state of motion unless acted upon by an external force. Now, since Louis is initially at rest in this thought experiment, we need to get him moving. To do this, we need to apply a force to him. So here's the force application diagram. We have Louis's weight with the red dashed line. Now, we can apply a force that's greater than his weight initially and accelerate him quickly and then back off to a force that's equal to his weight. Or we can take a more gentle approach and slowly increase the lifting force until it equals his weight. Now, the area of interest is where the force is equal to his weight. In these two cases, it's difficult to analyze the beginning forces involved. It's also a little difficult to analyze the closing forces that are involved. So we'll ignore those and just focus on the area where Louis' weight is equal to the force I apply with my hand. So he's moving upward with zero acceleration or at a constant rate. Now, can this state really be achieved? Yes, it can, as long as the upward force we apply is exactly equal to Louis's weight. So let's do an experiment to verify this. Here's my experimental setup. What I have is a cup full of rocks, and the mass of rocks is equal to the mass of my croquet ball. Now, my cup of rocks is attached to a string that runs up to a pulley, and then back down again to the croquet ball. Now, since the weight in the cup is exactly the weight of the croquet ball, I have equal and opposite forces. The tension in the string, which is equal to the weight of the rocks, is equal and opposite to the downward force mg of the croquet ball. So, as Newton says, since those forces are balanced, that croquet ball will not move. Its motion will not change. Now, however, if I give an impulse to the croquet ball and then release it, you'll see the croquet ball keeps moving. It moves upwards at a constant rate once I stop pushing on it. So, I think that bears out the fact that with equal and opposite forces, the ball will not move. However, if I get the ball moving, it will then move upwards at a constant rate once I release my force. So now let's see how that applies to my rat experiment. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our thought experiment. Now one thing to keep in mind, during this experiment, no rubber rats were harmed. So, what we want to know in this experiment is how are the change in energy and work done related. Now, what we want to do is start with Louis at point A and lift him to some point B. Now, we define this as delta H is a change in height. Now, let's look at the equations we'll be using. Work. Work is a force that is applied over a distance. So work is equal force times distance. And gravitational potential energy, PE, is mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height, where PE is equal to mgh. Now, we start off with Louis at height of zero, and then lift him up to the new height of one meter in this case. And that means our delta H is 1.0 meters. Now we also need to know Louis's mass, and it was measured to be 0.5 kilograms. 
first, let's take a look at the change of potential energy when we lift the weight up one meter. So potential energy at point A is 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. But since we're starting at zero height, there is zero potential energy in this particular case. Our reference is point A, which is zero height. But the potential energy at the final position is calculated as PE at point B is 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the one meter in height change. So that gives us a potential energy at point B of 4.9 Newton meters. And recall that kilograms times acceleration due to gravity is force and that's a Newton. Now, if we want to simply know the change of potential energy, we can use a slightly modified equation. And the change in PE is equal to the potential energy at height B minus the potential energy at height A. Now applying some basic algebra, delta PE is equal to mg times the height at B minus the height at A. Or delta PE is equal to mg times delta H, the change in height. Putting in some numbers, delta PE is 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height change of one meter. This gives us a delta PE of 4.9 Newton meters. Now, the work done to move Louis to the new position is work is equal to force times distance. We need to determine the force. And earlier we said the force is equal to Louis' weight. So to calculate that, we take the force is equal to 0.5 kilograms, his mass, times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. This gives us a force of 4.9 Newtons. So the work done to move Louis that one meter is work is equal to 4.9 Newtons times one meter or 4.9 Newton meters. Now, if we look at the units involved, this seems to make a little bit of sense. The units of potential energy is Newton meters and the units of work is also Newton meters. Now here's an interesting wrinkle. Work has a direction, and the work occurring in the direction of the motion of the body is defined as positive, but work done in a direction opposite the motion of the body is determined to be negative. The upward force applied by my hand is in the direction of motion, so it results in positive work. But Louis' weight is also a force, and it's acting in a downward direction, or opposite the motion. This force acts over the same 1.0 meters and thus results in a negative work. So if we look at the net work done on the body in this experiment, the positive work is equal and opposite the negative work. This means the net work done on the system is zero. Now, if I was accelerating Louis as I lifted him, that would mean that the force being applied by my hand was greater than Louis' weight. And that would mean that the upward work would be greater than the downward work being done by Louis' weight. And so the net work in that situation would be greater than zero. Now, I could do a more complicated experiment by looking at the forces at the beginning of the lift and at the end of the lift, and how that applied to positive and negative work to see what the ultimate net work would be. But I think I'll save that for a future thought experiment. Well, I hope that thought experiment gives you a little bit of insight on how work comes into play in changing the potential energy state of an object. Well, that'll do it for now. Hopefully I'll see you next time on LabRat Scientific.